bringing nature indoors is a great way to accessorize your home. Susie Bachman West with Bachman's mm -hmm. is here with some tips on using indoor plants for interior design. This is really the hottest thing in interior design, isn't it? It is. Bringing plants inside just automatically gives a fresh feeling. It brings the outdoors in. Yeah. And there's a lot of benefits of having plants around. Like what are some of those? Well, it increases your attention. Mm. Having plants around and something alive and fresh makes you feel more optimistic. Oh. And it also, plants are natural air purifiers. And so they take the toxins out of the air. They also take carbon dioxide out of the air because mm -hmm. the plants take in the carbon dioxide, give off the oxygen. So if you're feeling kind of sleepy, you know, throw a few more plants things, in. Throw a few more plants in there. They are all over so, all the interior design, magazines, everything. It's all about like explosions are. of color and green. And yeah. you've got that here today, right? Yeah, and so a plant can be used, you know, to brighten up a corner. Yeah. Uh, you can hang it, uh, divide a room. And the biggest thing you want to remember or know is the type of light that you have. Okay. And that can be confusing because plants are listed as yeah. high, medium, or low so light. So some of these that we're looking at right now, what are they? These are highlight plants. So okay. a highlight plant would probably have a western or southern exposure. Mm. So the croton or the fiddle leaf Fig oh, right it's such a tiny one. It's a small one. Normally, you see them a lot larger, but they have those large leathery yeah. leaves. It's great in a That's contemporary cool. environment. Same with the succulents. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you're someone that travels a lot and isn't home, a succulent's a good option. It doesn't require as much water. Nice. And then in the medium, you can still kill them, though, Susie. I've done my part. <laughs> I kill all my succulents. It's, yeah. It doesn't go well. Overwatering yeah. sometimes can be a problem. Yeah, sometimes too. Yeah. people love their plants too Kylie. much, right? Too much you know? love. <laughs> too much love. What That's can what you I'm do? accused of. That's, yeah, it's her bet. This so is really the pretty. medium uh, light plants. This would be kind of an eastern exposure, mm. and uh, so an uh, ivy, a diefenbachia, or a peperomia. Oh, I love those, those great, names. <laughs> Diefenbachia? Diefenbachia, yes. Very good. Okay. And then on the low light side, so this would be a northern uh, exposure. Yeah. And uh, so here we have the ponytail palm, a sago palm, Sansevieria, also called a snake plant or a mother in law's mm -hmm. tongue. Oh, uh, <laughs> very offensive. These are great names. My mother in law is a wonderful human being. She does not have a she tongue, does not have a sharp <laughs> tongue. The Dracaena yeah. or the Pothos. Can you get in trouble if you put a low light plant in a high light area? Ooh. You can. They can burn uh, and they'll, or they'll just constantly look almost like they're wilting. Got it. Oh. Um, so just like, make it sure is, on the It light. is important to put it in the appropriate Good. light area. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Susie, thank you. Susie, thank you. Thank you.